Good morning, everybody. It's the Bewitching Hour, and I'd like to welcome everybody to the Hearing Loss Association of America, the Diablo Valley Chapter Monthly Meeting. As all of you know, I think that Zooming is here for the rest of our lives, and I'm actually very, very grateful for it. It allows us to much uh, lip read much easier. We have captions that are easy for us to read, but we still have a lot of people who are not really tech savvy, who are coming up to speed with um, how to use technology. And so we want to ensure that every single person becomes fluent in how to be able to access and use Zoom. So the first thing that we start our meetings with are some simple directions for how to use Zoom on your desktop. And through time, since the pandemic started, um, we have streamlined our instructions because everybody is becoming more and more savvy. But we just have the basic things now to be able to help people or remind them if they don't remember from the last meeting. So if you're on a desktop and you look at the bottom of your screen, the black bar running across the bottom has all these icons in it. If you see the one that has a microphone that says mute under it, which is the orange button there, you can turn the sound on and off on your desktop. And we ask that everybody turn their sound off by default to keep from having interference. And sometimes you'll know that that's there because you'll hear this warble sound. So you may in a meeting have somebody say, oh, will you turn off your microphone? So that's where you would do that. We need to remind everybody this is live. There is a video. If you were doing something that you didn't want a whole bunch of people to see, please remember to turn off your video. In the early um, meetings that we had via Zoom, someone took their top off and didn't turn off their video. And we're all pretty assured that that person wouldn't have wanted everybody to see them topless. We'd like to welcome everybody to feel free to chat. And you can see there it says chat under that bubble. And we'd like to ask that um, you ask, say hello to friends. You can do that by just selecting a certain person. You can ask a technical question. And Alan Katsura is here to help you with the technical questions. The most important thing for all of us, right? Number one, turn on your captions. So if by some chance the captions are not streaming right now, the CC, it says on Zoom, it's called live transcript and you click on that CC button. Zoom keeps making improvements to its platform. One of the improvements that I really like is the ability to be able to move your transcript, the CC, closed captions anywhere you would like on your screen. So I tend to move it underneath the face of the person who's the primary presenter to make it easier to read their lips and to rely on the captions for what I don't understand. As you can imagine in large meetings like this, it's hard to figure out who to call on when. So we like to ask that you please click on the reaction buttons to raise your hand, and we'll give you more directions on how to do that a little bit later. Here's the CC. It's another view of the CC window. And after our last meeting, I usually talk to people about this, but after our last meeting, someone said, emailed me and said, you know, people might not know that they can change the size of the font for the captions. So, there's the CC, you can see that icon. When you click on that icon, another window will open up and the window contains the information in one, two, three on the right-hand side. If you click on subtitle settings, the window on the left will open up and you can see that slider bar there that says closed captions with font size. And I like my captions big, so I made them as large as possible. The raise the hand feature is in reactions. And when you click on reactions, the first thing at the bottom of that window is raise hand. When you click that, that notifies everybody in the meeting that you have a question because you get a hand in your thumbnail. And also in the list of participants, Zoom is very nice to us because it orders people 
who raised their hand in the order that they raised your hand. So you don't have to worry about, you know, like somebody cutting in front of you in the, in the grocery store or while you're getting gas, because it's in the order that you raised your hand, that's what we see and we try to call on you. You also in this window have an option of doing some other emotional responses. You can click on clap your hands, you can clip on a thumbs up. So just making you aware of there are more ways that you can communicate here. For me, this is a really important feature. In the middle of when you are viewing the presentation in the speaker view, if you see there right next to adjusting screen size, there's a pop-up window. That window is in the upper right-hand corner of your desktop view, and you will see some options in there. If you select speaker view, it highlights the presenter with the presentation. And why that's important is because, see that red circle there? There are some lines in the middle of that circle. And if you click your mouse on those lines, you can drag the window on the right or the window on the left, making one or the other either equal, smaller, or larger. So in some circumstances, I like the, the face of the person who's presenting to be larger because I may have a more difficult time understanding them. They may have a soft voice. They might have an accent. They might not be using an external microphone. And so that assists me with lip, lip reading. So you are in control of that. And just remember, oh, if you're struggling a little bit, there's another option here for you. I always, this slide is for me as much as for anybody else, because when I get excited or I get nervous or happy, I tend to speak faster. And of course, speaking faster makes it more difficult for us to understand. So it's a little bit, it's a reminder for me and for everybody else to slow down and talk at a slower pace so that other people can understand easier, including the captioner for accuracy. We'd like to let you know that one of the basic uh, de rigueur things that one needs to do with when you're Zooming or using virtual uh, meeting platforms is to use an external microphone. It increases the audio clarity. And in this meeting, if you haven't attached an external microphone, I'm not, and you have one, I'm not necessarily suggesting that you get up and leave the meeting and go get it and come back. But for next time, or for any of the other Zoom meetings that you're participating in, I'd like to remind everybody to connect an external microphone. So if you see, I have multiple ones. Oh, and I lifted that up, so that probably interfered with my audio. So that's the one I've been using recently. I also have this one. Which is readily available in Best Buy and things. It's an ex another kind of external microphone. So it's just a little reminder of how to improve audio for all of us. So now we're here to the the best part of our meeting today, right? So everybody knows that I love technology. I am always fiddling and futzing and trying new things and. Um, I'm very actively involved in all kinds of uh, listservs that talk about latest technology and things like that. A friend of mine who you all might know as the HLAA Hearing Loop advocate, Juliet Sturkins, in a conversation on the Get in the Hearing Loop Committee recently, mentioned to me this new technology called Badger. And she knows that I'm really actively involved in advocating in two healthcare systems in our area. Sorry, dear. My meeting is on. Excuse me, who was that who just talked? I got it. It was Judy O'Brien. So, Judy O'Brien, um, did I you have something her. to add, or was that a mistake? She just entered the meeting and she had her mic still on. Thanks, Alan. Okay, so, uh, so I was really excited. 
Um, all of you know that I've been a great uh, <clears throat> proponent of speech to text apps, especially during the pandemic when none of us can understand anything. So my speech recognition with my two new CIs, I have hearing beyond what I'd ever dreamed that I would ever have for the rest of my life. I still cannot understand anybody in a face mask. And I keep telling and reminding all everybody, you know, we live uncertain lives. We never know when we can hear and when we can't. So we need to be prepared to be able to ask for what we need before we need it, because then it's too late. So I dream of a world now where Badger is everywhere. <laughs> so it's my great pleasure. And you can see here, this is a sample here of what the Badger name tag is on the, um, the slide here. Um, it's my extreme delight and pleasure to introduce you today to Mike Williston. He's both the co-founder and the CEO of Satellite Displays. He's a results-driven entrepreneur who thrives in early stage startups. As CEO, he was responsible for taking an idea to reality in his quest to transform the way we communicate. Satellite Displays created Badger, the, first, the world's first closed captioning smart badge that converts speech to text and translations in real time. Badger can also translate in 50 plus languages. His vision for the company is what excites his team to elevate to the next level. Mike, it's all yours. <laughs> Thanks, Ann. Um, so typically whenever I do presentations, it's a lot more casual. So like Ann had uh, mentioned, maybe you wanna just bring me up on full screen. Um, and uh, so thank you for that introduction. So yes, I am the co-founder and CEO of Satellite Displays. And our purpose um, is to improve communication through innovation. And we are inspired to help all people overcome communications ba uh, barriers. So that's why we created Badger, which is the world's first closed captioning smart badge. Um, and just to kind of give you an understanding of a little bit about my background and where this idea came from. Um, so my grandmother is deaf. Uh, my dad has severe hearing loss. I have a minor hearing loss and so does my sister. So you can imagine that the person that has to communicate with us has a very challenging time. Um, but it really wasn't until I met my co-founder, Peter Sprague, and he had this idea about putting closed captions on people. And when I went back and I was working on a, a, a previous business in the, the hearing world, I, um, I was wondering like, where could this apply? Like, where could we really uh, implement it? And it wasn't until this really tragic story where my dad was in the hospital for 40 days. And for 40 days, he was fighting for his life. Nurses and doctors, they just had such a difficult time communicating with him that they would either not communicate with him or they would really wait for my mom to be there to be like the interpreter. So it wasn't like, and let me be clear, it wasn't like these nurses and doctors, they didn't know, they didn't want to like not communicate with him. It was just such a challenge. They didn't have the tools readily available. They didn't even have the self-awareness to know what to do. I mean, they tried to repeat themselves. They talked louder. But as many of you will know, is that communication is more than just the spoken word. It's about being able to see the person's face, the lip reading, the facial expressions, being able to smile. So that's when um, my mom came up with the idea of being able to just handwrite notes to him. And the nurses and doctors, they did that. They literally would handwrite notes. That's when I uh, was thinking back to what Peter said about putting closed captions on people, and I noticed every nurse, every doctor, they're wearing an ID badge. And all that ID badge does is it displays just their name, it scans in and out of a hospital and it kind of identifies who you are. But why not give it digital powers? Why not bring that badge to life with a purpose? And that purpose is communication. So that's what we did with Badger. We decided to give it digital powers, which it connects to your smartphone and it will do closed captions in real time. So that's kind of the reasoning why and how and uh, the purpose behind Badger and why we decided to put it on Badge uh, versus just using an app. Um, and um, the, the critical thing about Badger 
is that again, it's right below the person speaking. So therefore you still be able to have a normal conversation. You're not looking off to the sky, uh, off to the side at a display or anything like that. It's as normal as a conversation where they don't have to think about it. And just like Ann was talking about, it's always great to have your technology ready. And so when you think about technology, usually it's to help the person with the disability. But the thing about Badger is it helps the person speaking, which is one of the first of its kind. So not this doctor or nurse doesn't have to think about it. They have the badge ready to go when they need it most. They don't have to say, wait a minute, let me go find someone. Let me go find an interpreter. You can, with an instant, press a button and closed captions will come out. So that's one of the things that we're really excited about because Badger will at least um, bridge the gap of the challenge of how to communicate with someone with hearing loss. And Badger also translates into other languages. So if you speak a different language, Badger can translate into 50 different languages, which is really exciting. And all we're trying to do here at Satellite Displays is improve communication. Um, and closed captions really do help. Um, so before I go a little bit further, I, we I, have a request yep. that you please slow down. Slow down. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> if I if I tend to go a little faster, please uh, kind of bring me back down. <laughs> All of us. So, yeah. Um, thank thank you for that. Um, so um, before we jump into some questions, I, I figured I'll do a quick little demo. Um, so let me. Uh, I actually have to pull myself up on full screen so I can see myself. So this is Badger. So as you can see right now, I just displayed some simple information, my company's name, uh, my name, closed captions on you, uh, the logo of our company. But the great thing about Badger is once you press the button, now you have closed captions. So imagine walking into a CVS, a hospital, a grocery store. What are all those employees wearing? They are all wearing badges. And now you have the power to put closed captions on people in real time. No longer do you have to wait and find a piece of technology to help people with hearing loss. And like I said, we can translate in different languages. This is wearable tech with a purpose. And our purpose is to help those who can't hear well and those who speak a different language. It won't be on. I'm sorry, was there a question? Uh, Linda, I see you raising your hand. You're on mute. I'm going to need you to use a badger. <laughs> um, Linda, you're still on mute. I thought you had to unmute me and then I was trying to do it in the wrong place. Um, so, for example, if I had the badger and I go into a grocery store, Whose voice does it recognize? Is it translating my voice or will I hear the grocery clerk? <clears throat> yeah, so currently, um, one thing I need to explain about our company is we are an early stage company. So we, this is our first release. We only made 200 badgers, but that's a perfect question. It's always who wears the badge? So from a B2C um, standpoint, yes, if you have hearing loss, you might wanna purchase a badger you might wanna have a badger readily available um, because then for that example. But the goal again is from the B2B world is wherever you're going, we're trying to replace that badge. So when you walk in with a hearing loss, it's not only on your responsibility. And one analogy I would like to make is, um, imagine the, the challenge with hearing loss is when I walk in the room, you don't know I have hearing loss. And I know we really should probably identify ourselves as having hearing loss because it would make our lives easier, but most people don't. I don't walk into the hospital and raise my hand and say, I can't hear. So having that badge on the nurse, the doctor, or having that badge on the grocery uh, checkout line will make it 
that much easier and that much easier for that person to put closed captions on them to help you. So we help the person speaking and the person li listening. So the analogy I was going to make is if I had a broken leg and I, and I crutched into a store, you would know I need help to get up the stairs. It's a visible disability, unlike hearing loss. So Badger is being proactive and giving the tools that these businesses need. But in the short term, like you said, you might need to bring a Badger in and at a store, you can hand it to them. And then it's a live mic right now. One of the things that we are working on as a company is we are trying to isolate the speech as best as possible. So I don't know how well you'll be able to see, but there is a microphone on the top right here and a microphone on the bottom. The end goal is for the microphone to be here on the top saying, I'm speaking. The bottom microphone is going to uh, block out sound. Thank you. So I did speak a little bit about translations. So again, we're, we're trying to help all people um, communicate. I, just for demo purposes, I'd like to show you guys um, if there's any requests, does anybody know a different language? Because I don't, so, Alan? Okay, we have two people with their hands raised for questions. Okay. Yep, go for it. So I'm first, so I'm gonna ask my question. So yep. is the badge itself standalone? Um, currently, no. So the way Badger is, um, from a technology standpoint, it is uh, connected to your phone via Bluetooth. So what happens is when I'm speaking, it captures my audio. The audio is then sent uh, to the phone via Bluetooth. We have an application on the phone where it does the conversion. Then it sends the text back to Badger in real time. So that's how Badger works. Um, for the next uh, set of Badgers, we are actually going to be able to put Wi-Fi in it. So that way you have different ways to connect to um, speech to text um, softwares. The Wi-Fi will, if, let's give um, the nurse or doctor example. When they walk into the hospital, they connect directly to the Wi-Fi. When I speak, the audio will go into Badger up until the cloud through Wi-Fi and then it sends a translation. So it eliminates the need to have to rely on your phone. But again, if you don't have Wi-Fi, we want you to have the ability to then be able to connect to your phone. And we have two ways of doing it. It's either cloud-based where it's processed on the cloud, or what's really great right now is we have on-device speech to text. So if you have an Apple phone, it's iOS, um, well, it's Apple speech to text. And if you have an Android, it's Google speech to text. Thanks. Hi, I have, this is Mary Kate. I have two quick questions, I think. One is I noticed there was a bit of a delay, which I think you're explaining by definition by saying that it's going to the phone and coming back. Mm -hmm. So will that delay be minimized if you have the speech to text conversion on the badge itself? And secondly, how do you identify that you wanna translate? Yeah, so good question. So the delay is uh, a little bit of two reasons. Yes, it takes some time to send it Bluetooth and then back. But if you noticed um, the display, this display is called e-ink and e-ink is used in your traditional Kindle uh, type of um, uh, like reading book, like an e-reader. And there was a purpose why we chose e-ink. So remember the goal is to replace non-functional ID badges in the business world. So um, one of the, great advantages of the e-ink is it's low power. So therefore those badges will last very long. Um, we're hoping that it can last uh, more than 16 to 20 hours of captioning. So being able to have that. But the critical thing too is as an employee, you don't wanna lose your identity. So when the badge dies, it reverts back to a standard ID badge and it will live like that forever, even if you never connect it back to power. So that's one of the critical things. But with that being said, E-Ink is traditionally a little bit slower. Um, and that's why you see a little bit of the delay. Um, you had another question. Um, could you repeat that second question in there? I wanted to know if I said, hola, como esta? How do you know to translate instead of just giving me back to Spanish? 
Yep. So currently you have to operate it through the cell phone. You have to switch it to uh, input Spanish, output English, or input English, output Spanish. Uh, we're moving to voice commands because again, this is wearable technology. And the whole idea about wearable technology is to be able to be hands-free. So we'll have, since we have microphones, we're gonna use the command, hey Badger. So you can say things like, hey Badger caption, hey Badger Spanish. Some of our engineers are actually looking into uh, doing auto detect language. So if I just start speaking Spanish, if you have your output set as English in the settings app, it will then automatically do that. But for right now and the pilots that we're going to uh, be launching, you would have to go into the app, you would have to adjust the settings. So um, I actually have it opened right now so I, I can show you a quick language uh, demo. So if you can see my cell phone, here's the application. You click right here, you would launch it up. So I have input language English, output Spanish, I say enable. So now I'm enabled. I go back down here, I exit, I grab my badger. Hello, I do not speak Spanish, but now I can. Mm. That's great. Yep, so we're really excited about this, especially in the healthcare settings, because like I said, I don't speak a different language and I don't actually know what I would do. So. I think I would just sit there and wait until somebody helped me. And again, that's bad patient experience. And usually uh, an English speaking doctor will say in English, hold on, I'm going to get an interpreter. But that Spanish speaking patient doesn't know what they said. So they're just sitting there like, what's going on? And to relate it back to hearing loss, what people sometimes don't recognize because if you don't have hearing loss is that that person doesn't know what they're missing. So. I don't know what I can't hear. So when you're speaking to me, it's very challenging. And, and it's, it's an interesting topic to try to solve. And that's why I think captions are probably one of the best ways to do this. Thank you. You're welcome. Sandy, Blake. Yeah, I have two questions. First of all, I'm curious as to why you chose the name Badger. Because <laughs> uh, we're replacing a badge. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it's one of those things. Oh, that's it, so, it that's so funny. Um. I, so <laughs> that's, that's the uh, commercial reasoning. Um, I don't know if anybody's a fan of uh, the show Breaking Bad, but there was a character on Breaking Bad whose, uh, whose uh, name was Badger, and I was just watching it, and they kept saying his name over and over. And I was like, oh my God, light bulb went off. Um, I'll also give you a backstory of the company's name is Satellite Displays. So the technical reason why it's called Satellite Displays is because it's a, it's a satellite display of your phone. So one of the goals, and I'm sure some of you guys are wondering about um, tech size. So we can increase tech size for those who have uh, bad eyesight but we also plan to do larger displays in the future. So we want to be able to be this full communication services where you can have captions at a kiosk, you can have captions at a drive through menu, you can have captions on the whiteboard. So that's why we're looking, that's why the company's name is Satellite Displays. And before we came up with Badger, we first called it ICCU, and that stands for I Closed Caption U. But that was a mouthful, a lot of people, when I would say ICCU, they would think about the ICU, ICU U unit, <laughs> and it was just very, uh, very uh, um, troublesome. So I was watching the show, I heard the name Badger, and I was like, oh my God, light bulb went off, it's smart badge, we're calling this Badger. And it's really cool seeing people call it as its thing. And that's one of the things that I've been working very hard at, is I'm trying to make Badger like Xerox, like if I went and said, make a Xerox, you know, go make a copy. So what I'm hoping for in the future as the word gets out there is when people think of Badger, they think of an ID badge that has closed captions. I see, thank you. I'm from Wisconsin and the state animal is Badger. So I thought maybe awesome. it was connected. <laughs> My second question <clears throat> is, is your goal for this to distribute this 
to individuals or to, is it like uh, for businesses and hospitals? Well, I'm, I'm trying to see what your trajectory is here, if you don't mind. Yep, yep. so the answer is both. Um, so just to break it down, right now we built 200. We basically sold um, about 110 of them and they're out in the market. We had one major pilot program with a large hearing aid um, customer. They gave it to audiologists. And then the others were just like really early adopters that are nurses, doctors, teachers, kind of all these different markets where communication matters the most. Um, so those folks are, are um, currently using it. Um, what we're hoping to, be, to have uh, in the next couple months is about 2,000 more Badgers. And my goal as CEO and establishing these pilot programs is to go after different markets. So we are gonna go for B2B, which is business to business. So replacing the badges, but we are gonna go B2C as well. So one of the things with um, the hearing aid uh, company is that they solve a lot of value to give it to audiologists. Because when you walk in, you have hearing loss, so you need captions. But then the goal of that is, you know what? hey, my, uh, like I said, my dad has the severe hearing loss. I have the hearing loss. My mother might say, where do I get one of these things? Because she wants to be able to communicate with her husband better, with my father and, and others. So, so the answer to, to answer your question is yes, we're going to be going after both. There's going to be a consumer version and a business version. Oh, thank you. And um, one, um, what is the price point uh, roughly at this point? Yeah. Currently, we are selling badges for $300. Um, there's no software as a service uh, included right now, but the goal is to move from um, just a straight hardware sale to a hardware SaaS. Because again, this has a lot of smart features in development, um, like it's a live microphone. So there could be down the road, if we establish the right strategic partners, being able to connect this microphone to those hearing aids. So those are some of the early conversations that we're having. And honestly, that's one of the more exciting things about my job, to try to think of what can Badger do, all the potential it has. And I believe it was Anne was answering somebody's question uh, before everyone jumped on about the device that she was talking about where she had a remote mic that connected to the cell phone. Imagine if this was your remote mic, you would have displays captions on here and also on the phone. So just to give you an example, so you can have captions on both. Wow. wow. So you will always be able to communicate with whoever you want, whenever you want. It doesn't matter. Captions are great. I love them. And so should you. You know, thank you. Thank you for your idea. Thank you for doing yes. this. Thank you, Anne, for discovering him. Okay. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Alan Katsura. Um, Daniel Brooks has some quest questions in the chat. Actually, why don't we have Dan, Dan Brooks ask that himself? Go ahead. Dan, can you ask what you, your question in the chat? Yes, I'm here. Um, I'm just getting over a st stomach bug, so I'm not showing my video. But um, <laughs> you answered the first question. I'm just curious when the next series of Badgers will be coming out. And I think you spoke of the approximate costs. And then mm -hmm. I was asking if you might be interested if your company setting up a table at the state conference for New York, um, September 16th and 17th in Glens Falls area of New York later this year. Um, yes, I'm absolutely interested. Um, I, uh, could I, I'll give my information um, and is there a way that I can kind of send my email out to everybody so they can connect with me? Yeah, actually, you know what? I can send it to everybody who uh, signed up for this uh, meeting. Awesome. And, and I guess maybe this might be a good time to announce. So um, my website is satellitedisplay.com. There's a contact form. I answer it regularly. So Anybody in this uh, group right now is more than welcome to reach out if you have more questions or if, if you're interested in becoming one of the B2C pilot programs once we have more badgers available. Um, more, more than happy to put you guys on waiting lists, uh, things like that. So 
um, uh, the more inquiries, the better uh, my team and I can go and solve these problems and uh, bring Badger to the market. Um, and another way to find out a little bit more about satellite displays is if you go on a website called startengine.com. And if you search for Badger by satellite displays, that is where early stage companies go to raise money. So you can see our campaign there. I think we closed in about 23 days. So more than welcome to, to read a little bit more about the business side and, and ask questions and comments on that as well. Thanks, Dan. Mary Kay Owens. Again, me back, sorry. I just wanted to know how heavy it is and whether it's likely it, it looks a little large and I'm wondering if size is an issue, if you worried about the weight of it. Anything I'm not, like it's a, uh, yeah, it's 1.6 ounces. So uh, again, what I probably should have mentioned the reason we went e-ink is it's very low powered. So the, the reason your cell phone is so heavy is because this is a supercomputer. So they need a very large battery. We have a very small battery in here. And I guess this is what, uh, in demos, I usually, sh I used to work for Bloomberg way back when, and this was my Bloomberg ID. So just to give you a comparison of how big it is, it's about the same size. So if you look at any traditional uh, credit card, your license, it's basically that size. And then the, thin, uh, the thickness is um, 0.25 inches. Great, thanks. Oh, and uh, right now we have a magnet clip that clips onto the back. So the idea about this is to be able to take it off when needed, because we recognize that, yes, um, this is like uh, troubling times. You might need to stand far distance, six feet apart or whatever. If you have bad eyesight, the nurse, the doctor, or anybody can hand it, hand it off and you can dock it. So some of the ways that I know that uh, my family uses it, and it's, uh, it's pretty amazing to watch is, uh, with my dad, especially because he has the severe hearing loss, is we'll be at the dinner, uh, like a dinner table, and we just dock a badger right in front of my dad, and therefore he has captions and can kind of stay along with the conversation. It's pretty cool to see. Uh, Linda, Linda, I see your hand. Yep. Um, I just wanted to say I think this, if it's working as easy as you're demonstrating to us, it's really incredible in a way, and I. I have talked or emailed recently with Anne about a friend, husband, who um, has lots of health issues and his hearing is, you know, he's becoming severely uh, mm -hmm. incapacitated in that regard. But, you know, our suggestions to him and Anne gave, uh, you know, reached out to help if she could. And I'm sorry, Anne, I haven't gotten back to you. Thank you for all of that. But you know, he's, his other health issues is preventing him from moving forward. He has to concentrate on that. So what a remarkable thing this would be just with his wife. You know, he can't even get yeah. his wife really, and it's frustrating on both. But he could, and, and a minimal, if you could buy it at $300 seems so much less expensive than some of the other aids and so much less cumbersome. I mean, and really, uh, it's just amazing. So uh, I wish I had one today to get uh, <laughs> I, I'm working, also, yeah, I'm working very you can't hard. hear the doctors. He's going to audiologists. He doesn't know what she's saying. And even with his wife there, it's very difficult. So, yeah, um, I appreciate all those comments. Yeah, I, I mean, you nailed it. I mean, some of these things, like um, whenever I'm talking to folks like you, like we get it obviously right away. but um, like a nurse or doctor, like, or even anybody that doesn't have hearing loss never really understands what it's like. So traditionally, when I do demos, and I'm speaking to someone, somebody that has, um, I, I, let's call it good hearing, I put myself on mute. And that's how I do a demo. So I give them the experience of what it's like, so they can really understand the power that captions have. And it's very helpful. So um, yeah, all of that you said is, is, is just is really exciting. And uh, I, I can't wait for the next batch of Badgers to be out there. Um, like I said, uh, everybody in this group is welcome to, to join our waiting list. And um, once we have them, I'll, I'll notify it. So our goal is to keep it as simple, as easy as po possible. 
on our box, it says captions and no descriptions, and that's what Badger's trying to do. Sarah Oser. Hi. Um, how does Badger compare to popular captioning devices that we have on our smartphones? Mm -hmm. And what's to keep those companies from adding on a Badger type device to the captioning app that already exists and have you patented your idea? We are current, I was just gonna follow up with, we are currently pending patent. So our patent is being reviewed. Um, so that's number one. Um, number two is uh, the great thing about our software is we can uh, essentially use any transcription uh, software out there. So like I said, when it's on device, um, depending on which phone you have, it's their speech to text. I am exploring some early stage uh, startups that are working on speech to text um, that aren't as well known as the Googles, the AWSs, the Zers. And this one is by far very exciting. So we are in current conversations with them and thinking about how we could use them. Um, but the option is on the user, essentially. So we have an app where I can switch between the three different services and test them out. I think ultimately um, what, I'm, what it will come down to is whichever one turns out to be the most accurate, uh, the most, I guess, widely accepted speech to text service in the healthcare or whatever market we end up in. Um, but the flexibility is there so we can use whichever speech to text API we would like. Okay. Thanks, Thank Sarah. You. Susan Beck. You're mute, Susan. Please unmute yourself. <laughs> you need a badger. <laughs> Will you be giving presentations to HMOs like Kaiser? Because something like that would be fantastic. I, I haven't, but um, if you have connections, I, I'm more than happy to do presentations. I, I'm Badger's biggest spokesperson right now. Um, we are strategically uh, working with our partner, E-Ink, which is the display manufacturer. I have a couple uh, conferences coming up, like three or four of them. Um, I'm going out to Indianapolis. I'll be presenting on stage to a patient experience conference at the end of the month. So we have, I mean, the more, uh, the more uh, inquiries I can get, uh, I mean, I'm excited to, to get Badger out there. Prior to our start engine launch, we were in, I guess, quote unquote, stealth mode for that reasoning of we don't want any other big company to steal our idea. So we were working on the patent and, um, and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm excited. I mean, I think as Badger gets out there, our marketing gets a little bit more known. Um, those opportunities will be there because we are solving something meaningful here. And it's exciting. So I'd like to tag on a little something to Susan's comment. So Susan, you know, one of the hardest things in the world is to always get to the decision makers who can really <laughs> um, move an idea or something forward. And as all of you know, I'm very actively involved in advocating and patient advocacy committees at two of our major hospital systems now, UCSF, and also John Muir, and I just made a connection with another hard of hearing woman who recently, um, excuse me, a woman who is hard of hearing, who has hearing loss, um, who had problems with Sutter and a Badger will definitely be included in the conversation. Awesome, I appreciate that. And all the help, uh, the better. I mean, we, we are actively working. Um, if you look up my uh, co-founder, Peter Sprague, he is a well-known, uh, well long-term entrepreneur. So we've made some, some pretty big connections and I have a, uh, a good way of getting into the door. So I, I, I love it. Um, I'm, if you have an inquiry, I'm the type of guy that will pick up the phone, call that person right away. So um, any idea is welcomed and I appreciate it any kind of help that I can get because we're a small team and we have big dreams. So Mike, one of the problems that I've experienced is because I've worked both sides is that mm -hmm. even though um, I can provide the contact information, it takes them a long time to mm -hmm. come around to being willing to have a manufacturer 
uh, connect with them because they don't want to be sold. So that's just a, a trivia thing. Yeah, I, I 100% get it. Um, I, the great thing about my product is it's easy to understand. And I don't really have to do too much speaking because Badger speaks for itself. Yeah. I mean, the power to be able to um, put everybody on mute and make them feel what it feels like really gives them that experience. And then that's where the inclusion, the empathy, being able to not abandon your patient, all those, all those things start to, to kind of click. So the conversations get pretty, pretty uh, along, I guess. It's just a matter of getting badgers out there now. Um, Barbara Dagan. Yes, am I unmuted? Mm -hmm. Can anybody hear me? Yes. yes. <clears throat> okay, this is a two part question. Um, uh, do I understand correctly that in order to use the Badger, you must have a smartphone? Yes. Okay, so anybody using the Badger has a smartphone connection. Will the smart will Badger provide captions for multiple people? If three people are together and they each have a smartphone and a Badger badge, will that work? Currently not yet, but that's the goal. So I think the question goes back to the, the microphone isolation. So one of our goals is trying to be able to identify the person speaking. The pilot that we did with the hearing aid manufacturer and the audiologist, it was a live microphone. So if me and you are communicating, it will pick up both of our voices, especially if the person standing on the opposite side of the Badger is speaking loudly. But one of the things that is great about Badger is as we make improvements, as we work on microphones, that's where we get to isolate the voice and it updates automatically because you can control it with your smartphone and update the firmware. So it's not like you need to buy another Badger. It's not like you have to like, like get version two. Like we designed it in a way where all the power is in Badger and it's operated through software and firmware. Well, uh, th this is the second part. Okay. I'm, for example, I have particular trouble when I attend a meeting and there's a question and answer period afterwards. And let's theorize that several people in the audience, but they're scattered around the audience, are using their smartphone and they each have a badger. Can the, their badgers pick up their own questions and would the presenter who, let's say, has a badger and a smartphone, would he be able to answer the questions? Um, so that's three people. Could that work? I, I kind of, you were breaking up a little bit. I, I'm not sure I understood the question completely. Um, are you I'm suggesting sorry. that, yeah, so if you're in a room, let, let me try to repeat the question to see if I understand what you're asking. So. I'm a presenter, I have a badger on. Is that step yes. number one? Step number two, there's an audience with a badger on. And step number three- Three people in the audience. Three people in the audience. So the way badger is designed currently is um, when I speak, it goes into my badger and puts captions on me. When they speak, it uh, takes what they say and puts their captions. But what I was saying about the microphone is if uh, audience member number one is two feet away from me. And if I'm speaking loud enough, we don't have the microphone isolation set up currently today that it will pick up um, both of our voices. So you'll see transcriptions kind of of both people speaking right now. But the goal is to work on the microphone sensitivity where we only want the person wearing Badger to get captioned on what they are saying. Did that so each your one would yes. So each one would have to turn their badger off. Each one of the three, while another one of the three is speaking. 
Well, they're, they're independent. So not necessarily because if audience member one and two have their badgers on and they have captions going, the goal of having the second microphone is to block out the presenter. So therefore their badger won't be captioning because the wearer, the wearer is not speaking. So like my tagline a lot of times is I put closed captions on me for other people to read. So that's why I said badger helps two people. There's two people uh -huh. in a conversation. It's the person speaking and the person listening. So we help both because I, I always classify the person wearing it as my mother because she doesn't have the hearing loss. She's the one that wears badger for my dad who has the hearing loss because she wants captions of herself, just like you put caption on TV, just like you put captions on Zoom. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So actually, Mike, a, a way that might make this um, easier for those of us who are here today who understand the little remote microphones that we all mm -hmm. use that we pin on somebody else, well, yep. instead of giving the other person the microphone, you're giving exactly. them the badger. Exactly. And that's why when I talked about all these cool smart features in development, some of these, um, I guess, R&D questions is, what if? that remote mic becomes a badger. So you don't have to carry a remote mic or uh, your badger. It's gonna be combined into one. And if we could connect it to the hearing aids, you'll get the direct audio into your hearing aids and still be able to read the captions. That's one of my more exciting things and one of my to-dos that I wanna do down the road. Bluetooth LE audio sharing. Yep, <laughs> exactly. Jimmy Salmat. Yep. You're next. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you so much. As an audiologist and also a person that grew up with the hard of hearing people, I truly appreciate this innovation. And um, I first, I wanted to congratulate you and congratulate all of us that would be beneficiary of that. I was wondering how can we put our name on the waiting list or how do we purchase that? Yes, um, I, I wish I would have made a landing page that I could send to everybody so you could fill out uh, a contact form. I unfortunately didn't do that in time. I might after this call make something really quickly where I can collect everybody's uh, email address, but for the short term, and is there a way that people can send maybe you their contact information and then I can establish a uh, email chain with everybody that's interested in joining our waiting list? Yeah, so Mike, if you send me the email link to the waiting list, I'll okay. send it out in our MailChimp. And so anybody, and it would go to the whole list, anybody who wanted to sign up for that could then do that themselves. Awesome. That, that, that makes sense. So I, I will make a landing page with a form and you guys can fill out um, your information and then I'll start forming that out. This is awesome. Thank you, guys. And how long would be the waiting list? I mean, the waiting time. That is the most challenging question that I get. Um, so we are, like I said, we're working on putting Wi-Fi. I'm not, if you, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar, but there is a shortage of chips out there. I luckily have secured about 2,000 of them. They're in Japan currently right now, hoping to get them back um, into the states where we're manufacturing in Fremont, California. Um, so logistically, it's taking some time. Um, if I had to make an estimate, I'm probably thinking towards the end of the summer is when we'll start kicking off some of these pilots. Uh, that's a uh, aggressive goal of mine that I would like to, to hit. Um, so yeah, end of summer is what I'm thinking. Thank you. Daniel Brooks, Dan Brooks, you're up next. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm in the healthcare setting. I'm, I'm like a research coordinator at University of Rochester in New York. And yeah. Speech to tech technology has been wonderful and has advanced. But when you're in a healthcare setting, you know, you, you want the accuracy. You, you almost need it to be mm -hmm. accurate. So is there a way to have a live transcribe coming in if they were to like heart surface to come yep. in through the beds or that not a possibility? So I haven't looked into that, but the answer, I think it's, doable because I know there's apps out there that do it. So all we'd have to do is make the connection. 
And I'm glad you brought that point up um, because accuracy is something that always comes up with speech to text. But remember what Badger's main goal is. It's to establish that there is a disconnect with communication. So when I walk into the, uh, or when my father walked into the hospital, like I said, he didn't self-identify as having hearing loss. Um, him not being able to hear the nurses and doctors, I mean, after time, they figured out like, oh my God, he has a problem, but they just didn't know how to do it, uh, take care of it. So what Badger is at least supposed to be able to do is establish rapport because it's the simple conversation. I don't want you to read a medical document. Like I don't, I don't worry too much. What I want that doctor or nurse to be able to do for my father who has hearing loss is be able to walk in that room and say, Gary, you'll be okay. I'm going to get somebody. Let's wait for your wife to be there so she can help out. Don't worry. Because without Badger, guess what? My, 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 uh, my dad didn't know what was going on. He was sitting there. And, and it's very interesting. And I'm guilty of it too. And everybody always asks me, why don't you just tell the nurse or doctor you can't hear? I don't really have the answer for that. Um, but my dad, for whatever reason, was quiet. He was shy. He was nervous. And if you ever meet my dad in real life, he is not a shy guy. But for some reason in the hospital, he just wouldn't speak up. I understand that. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I do agree that but having some gap communication is better than nothing by all means. Yes, I agree. Yeah, yep. Uh, I mean, yeah, having, because without a captioning uh, device like Badger, that person's not going to probably hear anything. And if they require what you asked for, I mean, if you didn't even have the, the captioning, you wouldn't do anything. So that's just bad patient experience. That's bad communication. So yeah, I mean, Badger, it's trying to improve communications. And I think that's what we're starting with. Mike, I'm really happy that you're that you have invented Badger. I'm really saddened on the other side here that your father didn't know about speech to text apps. That breaks yeah. my heart. Uh, well, and uh, to an earlier, I think, comment slash question is it's all about simplicity. So my dad is uh, in his 60s. Um, he's not the best with technology. He's a guy that doesn't even really carry a phone with him. So, I mean, he knew of speech to text, but he didn't know how to operate it. So one of the things that I love doing with my dad and my mom is having them be my test, uh, quote unquote, dummies, because they're going to be the first ones to say, this is challenging for me, make this improvement. So we always work on the user experience on the app, being able to just press one button, captions come out, having Badger connect automatically. Um, like I said, we're early stage, we're, we're working through the kinks, but some of these pilot programs, we've learned so much. So being able to make this technology as easy as possible is one of our main goals, because if it's not easy, people won't use it. And that would be a tragedy. Thanks, Mike. Um, Bob Zastro. Okay, I was thinking about the badge benefiting me. It would have to be worn by the person I'm talking to, correct? Correct, correct. So, they sell them in pairs. Um, well, that I we, would we buy have, a pair and pass one on to the other man. Uh, we could, but why would you need a pair? Because I mean, well, you would want multiple badgers, I guess, if you wanted to talk to multiple people. But in terms of just you benefiting Bob as as a, a person with hearing loss, you would only need one because you would hand it. But of course, you could buy more and hand it to, to your wife and then your grandchildren for that, for that matter. But the example that I gave the way that my family currently uses Badger sometimes is my dad will just dock it on the dinner table. And because it's a live mic, because it has the opportunity to use other mics is the fact that it can capture all, our, all of our voices so then he can easily follow along. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's one of the more, more challenging things because when I first started pitching this, the question everybody wondered was, is this for the person with hearing loss or the person who wants to communicate with the person that has hearing loss? And it's really to be worn on the person that doesn't have hearing loss and it helps two people. Question, you, you mentioned 
two microphones, one on the top, one on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And can you make them directional microphones so that the one on the bottom is facing forward? Well, the one on the top would be preferably for your voice. Yeah, so, um, so right here on the top is a microphone and on the bottom. And what we're working on, but we haven't implemented it yet, is we're trying to get that this one captures this voice. This one blocks out noise. That's the goal. And um, we're working with our microphone manufacturer, Knowles, um, and we're hoping that we can start doing some test runs because, again, in the grocery store, CVSs, Walmarts, all those, all those uh, markets, um, uh, it's noisy. So we want to be able to isolate the person speaking because that's going to be the best transcription of the captions. Janie Kind. Thanks, Bob. Hi, Janie. Hello, Mike. Thank you so much for a wonderful, Hi. wonderful idea. I have yeah. a question. When you showed mm -hmm. the um, captioning on the smartphone, mm -hmm. right now I can retrieve my transcripts. Will the transcript be retrievable if I use the Badger? Um, currently, no. And reason why? Um, well, I, this is actually twofold because there's different modes that we have. I, this might be a good opportunity to tell you about some of our other modes. But in the healthcare with HIPAA regulations and everything, we want this to be as normal conversations as possible. So what the default setting is, is that it just captions and then disappears, just like a normal conversation. So we don't want the person wearing it feeling awkward or like, oh, am I being recorded? We don't want that. However, we did introduce a thing called notes mode and that's where it saves your transcriptions. And um, you, can, you can share it via text, email it. It's very, very simple. And um, that's where that would benefit to you. But just to show you it, what we did, and um, we wanted to make sure that people know they're being recorded is as you can see, the background of my app turns red mm -hmm. and we haven't implemented it, but there is a light fixture on this. And we plan to use this as a symbol saying you're being recorded. So the, the wearer and the speaker knows. So we are thinking about ways to doing it, but to get into these healthcare settings, these businesses, sometimes it's a gray area of, of the, the data privacy. Um, but, but good question. And, um, uh, if you have another question, I, I'd like to introduce a, another mode of Badger. Um, well, there's two modes. So there's Badger mode, there's notes mode, and then there's text mode. So three modes. Badger mode is what I basically have been talking about. Um, the only thing I haven't mentioned about Badger mode is in the app, there is an option to go full screen. So for whatever reason you forget to have your Badger, you don't have it handy, we don't want you to be without captions. So having the ability to go Badger mode um, full screen is really beneficial. And you'll be able to use it just like your regular transcription app, only you'd be using ours. Um, number two is the notes mode. Again, it's the same thing, only it records and then it saves it into a list. So if you text message and you see how you can go through all your text messages, it's the saved the same way. You can select it, share it, send it via, uh, via email, text, all that great stuff, be able to have it there when you need it most. You can also um, change the title of notes mode. So you can organize your notes. You can say uh, the it saves by date. So you can like imagine if notes mode was on right now, you can say HLAA, Badger presentation, and you have that saved. Um, the other one, which was uh, a new one that we just came up with and a speech therapist once came to me and said, what happens if my patient can't speak? And to me, I thought that was a silly question. I was like, it's voice technology. I'm trying to put captions on people by using your voice. What do you mean? I can't help you. But it never left me. I always kept thinking, I'm like, man, how do I solve this? So we came up with text mode where we turn your phone into a remote keyboard and then you can literally text your caption. So I'll do a quick uh, demo of that. Let me just reconnect Badger. Make sure I'm here. Let's 
So imagine if for whatever reason, a disability, um, a stroke, any kind of reason why a patient or a person might not be able to speak. Um, it, it never, I mean, I, I take it for granted. I never thought like, what if I can't speak like for whatever reason, but how would I communicate? I don't know sign language. I don't know what to do, but here you make it very simple. I can text really quickly. It displays it. I'm putting captions again, facial expressions, looking up. Um, one of the things that I don't know if you guys notice every time someone raises their hand or speaks, I try to identify where you are because I want to look at you. I, I, I mean, yes, I can hear, but I don't hear well. And being able to see your smile, being able to see your eyes, your reactions, like if you dozed off and fell asleep, I would know, hey, Mike, you got to say something more funny. So, <laughs> Thank you. That's perfect. I love the idea of the three modes. That's a great yep. one. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for asking your question, reminding me to bring that up. <laughs> I don't see anybody else with their hand up. Does anybody else have a question? Okay, so I have another question. Yep. So we're hearing that the projected cost for Badger is going to be $300. Mm -hmm. So is that for the badge only? And is there going to be an additional charge for the software that goes with it? It would be monthly, yearly? Uh, it's to be determined, but eventually it will be a software as a service. Um, pricing will be in line with most captioning services. My goal though, is to work with these companies to somehow find a way where there will be a quote unquote free version and then a premium version. So like I said, all these features that we have um, really can benefit. And again, um, the idea of replacing a badge like this costs nothing. So one of the things for healthcare settings and businesses, my goal is to bring down the hardware price and then be able to upgrade with them through the services that we provide, whether it be more languages, better accuracy, um, being so there's RFID and NFC and Badger being able to scan in and out. Um, there's some other business analytics stuff in the background that we could do. So there's a lot of things, but for the simplicity of our first product launch, it's just three hundred dollars. Early adopter, you're getting the free version. You don't have to pay anything else. Like it's it's pretty simple for the first few pilots. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Mary yep. Kay Owens, you thought of something else. I did. I used to work for the New York State court system, mm -hmm. and we used our ID badges as um, scannable to both clock in and out and to get through secure doors. Yep. And I'm thinking that they're not nothing. You just said that badge that you got was nothing that cost nothing. But actually we had a little unit of people who took photos, who created badges, who kept them. You know, it was, an, it was not an inexpensive little process. So I think you should keep yeah. that in mind in terms of $300 may seem like a lot, but I suspect that a lot of organizations are using them for security as well. And if you could I, combine the yeah. two features, yeah, so there is RFID and F NFC. So like I said, like the goal of designing this was to put as many uh, smart features in development as possible so we can grow with the business. We want to solve communications first. That is out there. They love the idea. Then we want to be able to come back to them and say, what else do we have? And then we talk about being able to connect it to the EMRs, being able to connect it to the scanning in and out, things like that. So it's going to be more than a communication device in the long run. Um, when I say inexpensive, I mean, it's th I meant more so just this, this is inexpensive, the actual plastic, but the process and, the, and everything behind it, getting the beacons um, and getting it connected. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely correct. And um, I should bring you along on some calls, Mary Kate, because uh, <laughs> I get some, I get some VCs cracking down on how are you going to replace this little cheapo thing? So that passion you bring is what I need in the meeting next time. All right. I'll be there. <laughs> nice. Any more questions? So Mike, as you can tell, we've had a very engaged and active Q and a here and everybody's really thrilled thinking about the possibility that Badger 
has to offer us to be able to communicate better in a wide variety of settings. We'd like to thank you for coming today. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, this was great and I loved it. And I hope you guys enjoy it.